Linda, it's over to you. Okay, I would like to present Joe. He is, um, hang, hang on, I had it already, now I lost it. Maybe that's the notes I was looking for. Anyway, Joe is the chairman of the USBGF. Is that correct? Yes. I'm sorry, Joe, just I lost my note. So it, Joe's been on the Giants, been very involved in backgammon, and uh, welcome to Mr. Joe Russell. Thank you. Oh, Joe, we may be related. Sorry, I just realized that. Wow, we'll talk later. Shoot. That would be funny. How's that? Uh, I'll explain later. Okay. Sorry, just, just ring a bell. <laughs> uh, some okay. DNA stuff? Uh, no, actually not. Your your last name. Okay. In Tennessee, you're from Tennessee. Are you originally from Tennessee? Yeah, I am. Okay, but from Memphis or elsewhere? Memphis. Okay. Okay. You want me to share my screen now? Yes, please. Sure, Joe. That'd be great. Okay, so one thing I wanted to, one thing I think is very important, and some of you may know a lot of this anyway, but I think it's important to emphasize is uh, the difference, the variation of opening moves at various match scores. Now, the reason that a lot of times the differences are very small, but they're very important because they occur so often. They occur, you know, just all the time. You, you have these, you know, they there's you, you get complex positions in the mid game where you have a play to make and it's a tough play. And that's a position that may come up once in your backgammon career. But these opening moves come up all the time. And everyone should learn the proper opening moves and, uh, and replies. But they get pretty complicated when you're talking about, you know, various match scores pretty easy to learn for a money game or you know a zero zero score in a long match but at various match scores you know it's when what when, when am i supposed to bring two down when am i supposed to split you know and what i tried to do was to uh make a few axioms that you could follow uh that would make these 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 easier uh and this, is, this isn't a very long lecture. I mean, we, I was going to spend a little bit of time on XG as well, showing you some of this. I've, I've made a very short PowerPoint, uh, but I'll be happy to answer questions. But I also wanted to go through, after we do this PowerPoint, I wanted to go on XG and show you like special scores, especially like the four-away, two-away score and how people so many people still get that wrong and how important it is to be aggressive at that score when you're four away and two away. But first, let's go to this variation of the moves at various match scores. So let me scroll down. The first one is the 2-1 opening. Oh, sorry. Now, these, these are all based on seven-point matches because most matches will come down to being a seven-point match, even if they're longer matches. And if the score is too far out of whack, then it doesn't really make that much difference anyway. And basically, you, you know, the, the, the tenet is you want to be aggressive when you're behind and be, be somewhat conservative when you're ahead, but not overdo it. A lot of people tend to overdo being too conservative when they're ahead. So the 2-1 opening, the correct play is 11 and 5. 11 and five. When you're tied or trailing, any time the score is tied or you're trailing, you should play 11 and 5. That is the proper play. A lot of people still play 23, and the, and the plays are close, but it 11 and 5 wins more, and it is the proper play. Uh, or at least it has more equity, let's put it that way. When leading Crawford, now here, this, this one, uh, is is some people may get this wrong. When leading Crawford, 11-5 is the correct play unless your opponent is six away. So even you, a, a lot, you may think, if, okay, I'm, I'm leading six to five Crawford, 
I should split because a gammon is, you know, wins for my opponent. 11-5 is still the correct play. So that kind of goes against the intuitive logic that you may want to split at that score to avoid being gammoned. And to tell you the truth, most of my career, I did split at that score to avoid being gammoned. And it's not a big difference. We can look look at XG in a minute, and I'll show you that one. Remind me when we get there. Uh, here's when your opponent is seven away or six away, has zero or one point, play 11, 11 five, unless you have three or more points. So if you have, if your opponent is seven away or six away, you should play 11 five, unless you're, unless you ha have three or more points. So if you're leading uh, three to nothing or three to one, or four to nothing, you're laying three, four, or five to nothing, or three, four, or five to one, you should play 11 to five. I'm sorry, you should you should then split. Unless you are leading three, four, or five nothing, or three to one, four to one, or five to one, <coughs> you, you, you should play 11 to five if you are leading three to, three to zero, four to zero, five to zero, or three to one, four to one, five to one, then you should split. So that's a pretty pretty good axiom to remember. Just if you're basically, if you if you have your opponent has zero and you have three or more, then you split, otherwise play 11, five. If your opponent has one and you have three or more, three, four or five, split, uh, Otherwise, play eleven five. So that's that's th those are those are things. These axioms, I think, you can you know you can commit to me memory, and they're easier than trying to learn, you know, them one by one. So here here you have a grouping. Your opponent your opponent has zero or one. If you have three, four, or five, then split. Otherwise, play eleven five. When your opponent is five away or four away. That means they have two or three points. Play 11 5 unless you have five points. In that case, split. Okay, so again, when your opponent is five away or four away, play 11 5 unless you have five points. Now, I might, did I get, I'm, hold on one second. I'm gonna make sure I didn't write that backwards. One second. Are you saying not to do it at two away, Joe? Yeah, yeah, one sec. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I did have that correct. Okay. Yeah. That <clears throat> it at two away, you split. When your opponent has five or four away, two or three points, play eleven five unless you have five points. If you have five points, then you split. Okay. When you are at Crawford. When you're at Crawford, play 11 and 5. There's one exception, but this, you don't even have to. This It's bet when things are a wash, basically a wash or 0.01. If you can have one rule that you follow, it's, it's better to follow that rule so you don't get confused. Basically, when you're at Crawford, play 11 5. Now, the, it does seem anti intuitive that when you're at Crawford and your opponent's two away, it seems like you would want to split. But it's still, it's still, it's still not, it's still correct to play 11 5. Okay, let's see. And that's one that I got wrong most of my backgammon career. 
having trouble getting to the screen. Okay, let's go to the 401 opening. The 401 opening, you play 23 and 9 is the standard play, unless you're trailing by four or more or four away, two away. So if you're trailing zero to four, then you play nine five. If you're trailing five to one, then you play nine five. And if you're four away, two away, which you know, gammon go, then you play nine five. Uh, when your opponent is two away, it all scores that your opponent is two away, you play nine five. So no matter what, two away, two away, you play nine five. Two if your opponent is two away, period. You play nine five. So that this is a that's pretty easy to remember for the four and one. You have to be trailing by four or more to play nine five. Uh, this is in a seven point match. Uh, it would probably hold up similar in in you know in, in longer matches, uh, but basically in a seven point match, if you're trailing by four or more. Uh, you could play 9-5, otherwise 23-9. Uh, when trailing Crawford, always play 9-5. When your opponent is 6 and you have any other score, play 9-5. Uh, when your opponent is 2 away, play 9-5. So th that's pretty pretty easy to remember for the 4-1 opening. The 4-3 opening, you play 9-10 uh, unless... When you, your opponent is seven away, you lead by three or more. Then you split, play 21 and nine. When your opponent is seven away, when your opponent is six away, you, you have to lead by two or more. Then you play 23 and nine, I mean, uh, 21 and nine. When your opponent is five away, you lead by one or more. Then you play 23 and nine. At, at Crawford, your way, always play play 21 and 9. At Crawford, her way, always play 13 and 9. The 5-2 opening. The 5-2 opening, play 22 and 8, unless you have zero points and your opponent has two or more. So if you have, you're playing to seven and your opponent has two, three, four, five, or six points. Well, I'm not talking about Crawford score. So your, your opponent has two, three, four, or five. Then you bring two down. If you have one point, two points, or three points, and your opponent has four or more, then you bring two down. So if you have one and your opponent has four or five, or you have two and your opponent has four or five, or you have three and your opponent has four or five, you bring two down. Otherwise you stick to the standard 22 and eight. If you have four points and your opponent has five, you bring two down. When your opponent is at Crawford, play two down, and, and unless you have two, 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 that's supposed to say if you have an odd score. Uh, an odd score, obviously, when your opponent's at Crawford, if you win a gammon, it saves you an entire game. If you're an even score, it doesn't save you a game. So when your opponent is at Crawford, you play two down uh, if you have an if you have an odd score. So if your opponent's at Crawford and you have one, three, or five, play two down. If you have zero, two, or four, make the split play. Okay. And that's the end of the presentation. Now I want to share my XG. So I guess I go back, stop sharing, share, stop sharing, and then share the XG, right? Sure, that would work. Okay. Okay, so I'll can you see my XG now?
Yep, we can see it. Yes. Okay, fine. So I wanted to go. This is the score that I just. A lot of these scores are very small, but let's let's look at a few of these scores that we talked about. So this is the seven point match. Uh, I don't know why my XG is acting funny, but hopefully it's going to work. Uh, so this is. Let's talk about the two one in the seven point match and show you some of these that I was talking about. So you can see. At zero zero, thirteen eleven six five is slightly better than twenty four twenty three thirteen eleven. It's point zero zero seven. Now it's a very small difference. Some of these will will be quite big, uh, but it, you can see at various scores. Look, like for example, at the four away two away score. This becomes a 0 0.064 era to to play. So th this era is like nine times larger at this score than it would be at you know at uh, a zero zero score. Uh, and th the one that I found surprising when I went through all this was when your opponent is at Crawford. When you're at Crawford, I mean, and your opponent has five. 131165 is still slightly superior. Now this this one seems anti-intuitive to me. I would think I'm at Crawford. He needs, you know, he needs he needs he needs a gammon. He's uh that I would want to split to avoid gammons. And it's almost a wash. Uh the splitting play uh does it, it actually has here the splitting play gets gammon more. I, I that that was I'm sorry. Yeah, the splitting play has getting gammon more, which was surprising to me. Uh, but these are kind of a watch. You could you could kind of do whatever you wanted to at the score. But you could see, like I said, when it when you're looking at like the the, the five three score, this becomes huge, 0. 0.064. So that's that's just huge. And, and to make an error like this on the first move of the game, you know, would, it's just astronomical. Uh, and it and it happens so often. So you have to incorporate into your uh, into your repertoire that you know you're you're always going to be doing this. And at various match scores, this you know uh, you can see like if your opponent is your opponent is six away Crawford, that's going to be it. And you don't do that. Also, another uh, huge era. Joe. Yeah. Can can I'm I'm more of a visual person. Can you? Um, move the checkers to where. At yeah, sure, absolutely. Score. Okay, so if this, I can just click on final play here and show you this. This, this, this is the play. So you, you, your 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 opponent is at Crawford, and you're two away. So you want to win a gammon. So you want to play aggressively to try to win a gammon. And this is the best play for money in the first place. So obviously, when the gammon means more than it normally does, this is the play you're going to want to make. This is a 0.029 era to not make this play. Uh, at money, it's only 0 0.007. So it's four times larger to make to make to not make this play. It's a four times larger mistake to not make this play when your opponent is Crawford and you're two away than it would be at money. Uh, the same thing would hold up for most of your odd scores. You, you, if you just click down, you can see at uh, four at four away, it's only a point oh one five era. Uh, at three away, it's a point oh two era. So at the odd scores, it becomes a bigger era because the odd scores, if you get a gammon, it saves you an entire game. So when your opponent is at Crawford. Basically, when your opponent is at Crawford, you just always you always make this play. You just always play. I think the only there was one score where it was close. It was like maybe uh, I think it was six one or some six one Crawford where it became really close. Yeah, no, maybe 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 I'm thinking of it differently. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's just it's just always right. Anytime your opponent is Crawford and you open with two one. You play 11-5. You should play 11-5 all the time anyway, unless you you unless you're 
unless you meet the, the conditions that I told you. You know, if you learn those axioms, you'll, then you'll get this right. It's it's there's very it's only like three or four simple rules to learn. And then you'll always play a two one right in all your matches. So that's pretty nice. You learn like three axioms and you're always going to play a two, three, four axioms. You can always play a two one right at any score. That's pretty easy. That's a lot easier than remembering them one by one. Uh, and let's see. Hey, Joe, how far ahead again? I know you said it in your in your presentation, but how far ahead in the match score do you need to be to split versus doing the default 11 five? Well, that's what I, I did in axiom, but let's go back to it. Mm -hmm. OK, let's go back up to the 2 1 opening. So your default is to always play 11 5. OK, so these are all so. Play 11-5 when tied or trailing. So that's one thing easy to remember. If the score is tied or you're trailing, always play 11-5. Doesn't matter what the score is. As long as you're trailing or it's tied, play 11-5. That's axiom number one. Okay. When you're leading Crawford, play 11-5, except when your opponent is six away. But basically, you can just, I think you can always... That that's almost a wash. Let me look at that on my own and I'll tell you what that was. You're leading Crawford. And your opponent has one. Well, actually, that wasn't a wash. It was 0.012. It was 0.012 better to split. And I'm not exactly sure what the reason is. These are based on lengthy rollouts. But so so and if you wanted to make it simple, you could say when when leading Crawford, always play 11-5. The only time you'd ever be wrong, and then you'd be wrong by 0.012, is if your opponent is six away. So I, to me, it's, sometimes it's just easier not to try to remember that exception, just because it's only one score and it's only 1%. So you could just say, when leading Crawford, play 11-5. Now, most, a lot of people would think when leading Crawford, you know, I'm going to split to try to avoid being gammoned or whatever, but it, it just turns out that playing 11-5 is best. Uh, when your opponent is, okay. When your opponent is seven away or six away, zero or one point, play 11-5 unless you have three or more points. So if they have, if it's a seven point match and they have one or two, if you have I mean, I'm sorry, they have zero or one. If it's a seven point match and they have zero or one point, play 11 five unless you have three or more. So if they have if they have if they if they have zero, you need a three or more point lead. So if, if we're, and we're not talking about Crawford score. So if they have zero, you, you play 11 five unless you have three, four or five, in which case then you split. If they have one, you play 11 five unless you have also three, four, or five, in which case you split. So if they have one, you need a two or more point lead. If they have zero, you need a three or four or more point lead. But that's pretty easy. You can group those together because they're the same. When they have zero or one, you need three or more points. Then you should split. Okay. Your opponent you. is five away or four away. So that they have two or three points. Play 11-5 unless you have five points. That's that's easy to remember. Then you split. Okay. Uh, and when you're at Crawford, play 11-5. Six away, I said, is a wash. That's really 0.01. So you could remember that. Uh, but I, I just, just think it's easier to do that. So let me go back to... Sharing XG again. Am I still sharing XG or am I sharing? Uh, no, you have to reshare it. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, so that's that's the two one. Now, it, 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 let's look at let's just look and see how this works out at various scores. Hey, so we Joe. said when your when your opponent has Joe, zero. Yeah. We got a we got a request if you could show the away score in the corner of XG. Since your axioms have the away score, 
Okay. Uh, you just click on the score in the upper right hand corner and you right click on it and you can change it to a way score. You right click. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So here's when your when your opponent is seven away, right? So how do you play two one at various scores? Okay. So let's first of all the zero zero score, you thirteen eleven six five. Six away, seven away, thirteen eleven six five. Five away, seven away, thirteen eleven six five. But here's here's where it should change. We're going to now have a three point lead. So at three, four, and five to zero, we should be splitting. Okay, so three zero split. It's it's almost a wash here. It's point zero zero one. That's like optional. Start showing up more at this score. If you're leading four nothing, now it becomes point zero zero seven. As you can see, it's it's usually very very. You should just get into splitting. I mean, so sliding. It's usually very, very small error. Okay. Uh, and at five nothing, now it becomes a larger 0 0.011. So five, four, four nothing and five nothing are really the only scores that it really matters. So three nothing was kind of a wash. Okay. So let's see if our opponent has one point. Okay. So if we have zero, Obviously, we split because we split any time we're tied or trade. We're tied or trailing, so we're we're trailing here at one one. We're going. I'm 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 at slot. At one one, we're also going to slot because any time we're tied or tied or trailing, we slot. Okay, so at one one we also slot. It's point oh seven. Okay, now we lead two one. Becomes very close. With, with leads, it becomes very close. It's 0 0.002, but it's still right to slot. At 3-1, now this, this is the point when I think it switches. It becomes 0 0.002. So remember, 0 and 1 are treated the same way. When our opponent when our opponent is 7 or 6 away, as soon as we get to 3, 4, or 5, then we split instead of slot. Okay, and at 4. 4-1.06 and at 5-1.015. So the the big scores were like four, you know, four nothing, five nothing, and five one. That's when it becomes very critical for you to split instead of slot. So the, again, that axiom is if my opponent is seven away or six away, and I have three, four, or five points. I split, otherwise I slide. Okay, let's and let's look at when my opponent has two points. When my opponent has two points, I'm trailing. Obviously, I, I slot when I have zero. When my opponent's five away and I'm seven away, I slot. I'm trailing at two at six at five away, six away. So obviously I slot right by 0.012. At a tied score, two to two, I, I slot right by 0.011. Now I'm up three to. I slot, but it's right by 0.009. Now I'm up four to. I slot, but it's a wash. So at four to, this becomes a wash. Okay. And at five to, I split. So when my opponent has two points, I have to have five. I think it, I think it was when and when my opponent has three. When my opponent is three away, obviously at one, two, and three, I, I'm going to slot because I'm tied or trailing. It's 0 0.02 at zero. When my, when my opponent's four away and I'm seven away. It's 0 0.02. When I'm six away, it's 0 0.017. When I'm five away, it's 0.017. When the score is tied, it's 0.019. And the reason for this is, why, why did it go up when the score, when I went from in, tied, it's because gammons win the match here. And this play wins more gammons. 
Richmond's 14.4% gamins versus 14.2. Uh, sorry, I clicked the wrong side. When I'm leading 4-3, slot, and 5-3, split. Obviously, 5-3, split. Uh, the reason being, I, it, my opponent's four away, I'm two away. I want, you know, he's a gammon go. I want to split to get off his gammons. Okay. And when my opponent has four, I think the only score that I, let's see, four, four, every, everything I split. And yeah, it all, it all scores when he has four or more than I slot. Okay. So let me go back to the Axiom page. Anybody will look at any other scores on any you you, you kind of get a grasp of let's let me share the axiom page again. You see it here? Not yet. Okay, hold on. Clicked on the wrong one, sorry. Okay, so let's go over this. Let's go over the two one opener again. And I guess you know you, should, you can. I guess that you, this is on YouTube. You can write these down, uh, but it's pretty easy to remember. And I, these are a few axioms that you'll never play a two one wrong in a match, at least in a seven point match. Uh, but as I said, in longer matches, just know you know when tied or trailing, always slide. And when you have a significant lead, sometimes it becomes right to, to split. Okay, so play 11-5 on opening 2-1 when you're tied or trailing. That's, that's, that's the easiest axiom you can ever remember. Always, always slot when you're tied or trailing at any score. Okay, when leading at Crawford, play 11-5 unless your opponent is six away. And that's a .01 arrow. So, the, the again the thing that that I I did that most of my career except for when I was leading Crawford two away I would split and that's pretty close play it's it's kind of a, a matter of preference but it does show eleven five is still slightly superior. Uh, having trouble moving this little by little. Maybe I should have left it in PowerPoint. Uh, when your opponent is when your opponent is seven away or six away, play eleven five unless you have three, four, or five points. So when that's that's an, another one easy to remember. If, if they're seven away or six away, I need a three. I need to have three, four, or five points. So another way to look at this is, if they're seven away, I need a three or more point lead. And if they're six away, I need a two or more point lead. Okay. Uh, when your opponent is five away or four away, play 11 5 unless you have five points. So, at any, unless you have, if they're five away or four away, unless you have five points, play 11 5. And when you're at Crawford, play 11 5. The exception is that six away, it's a wash. So just, since it's a wash, just at Crawford, you always play 11-5. So basically, you're playing 11-5 most of the time. When are you not playing 11-5? When your opponent is zero and you have three, four, or five. When your opponent is one and you have three, four, or five. And uh, when your opponent uh, is two or three, unless you have five. I'm sorry. Yeah, when your opponent is two or three, unless you have five. So that's that's pretty easy. I mean, you should never look at this. You should never get a two one wrong. It's like such an easy thing and, and you'll never make another mistake. Pretty easy axioms. You don't have to remember all these different things because they're grouped together. They're grouped together. When your opponent is zero, you need three, four or five. It, you, you slot unless you have three, four or five. When your opponent is one, you slot unless you have three, four or five. When your opponent is uh, 
two when your opponent is two or three, you slot unless you have five. When you're at Crawford, you always slot. Uh, uh, so basically, you could always slot. You, you, you'd almost never be wrong just always slotting at anything except those three examples. So that's pretty easy to remember. So let's go. Let's go on to the next one again. The four one opening. Okay, so if we look at the four one opening, you know, four it's twenty three and nine is a bit superior. We'll look at it in just a minute, but it's a bit superior to uh, nine and five. Uh, because you're you're splitting your back checkers, you're getting a man on the nine point. It's you know you're you're accomplishing a lot. Uh, and nine and five is the aggressive play that you make basically when you're trailing, and 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 you need to to, to get a gammon. Uh, but it's not like a two one. Two one is a two one is the right play in the first place. A four one is the wrong play. So obviously there has to be more going on for you to make the normal money wrong play into a correct play at a match score. So th it's very, there are very few cases where that's right. So you play 23 to nine, unless you're trailing, unless you're, unless you're trailing by four or more. So it's zero, four and five to one, uh, uh, zero, four, zero, five and five to one. Again, remember, we're not talking about Crawford scores. Okay. So, you, you with a four one, you play twenty three and nine unless you're trailing four nothing or five nothing or five one. In those cases, then then you play nine and five. Also, if if you're four away and your opponent's two away, that's the you know the game and go score. Then you play nine and five. Uh, and when your opponent is when you're when anytime your opponent is two away play 9-5. When trailing Crawford, play 9-5. And any Crawford score, play 9-5. So there's three easy rules for a 4-1. Three rules and you'll never get one of these wrong in a seven-point match. Play 23-9 unless you're trailing by four or more. Or four-away, two-away. When trailing at Crawford, always play 9-5. And when your opponent is two-away, always play 9-5. Three easy rules, you'll never miss 4-1. Now let's go double-check those on XG to make sure they're right. So now we're going to be looking at, you see XG now? Not yet. All right, let me try it again. Okay, we can see it. It's now, right? Okay, yes. so let's try, let's try the, the 4-1. First of all, at a 0, zero score, you're going to see that it is wrong by 0.014 slot. So this... Where, with, where the two one, we started off with an advantage, and it you know at a money game or a, a, a zero zero score. Here you're starting off at a disadvantage. So obviously you're going to have to it's going to have to be a much more desperate situation for you to go for the slot rather than the split. Hey, so we so can for see, our audience, could you could you show the checkers in their final? Yeah, form? sure. I'll do that. Absolutely. So. Yeah, OK, we'll start with zero, zero. We'll look at the two plays. OK, this is this is one play. OK. And this this is the standard normal play in, for money backgammon, and it match scores of equal uh, most match scores. This is the play that you make. Uh, it's 0.014 better than the slotting play. This is the slotting play. It's 0.041 better than this. Uh, This play is a play that you make aggressively for gammons. Okay, so let's look at your trailing one nothing and see what the difference what happens. When trailing one nothing, nothing really has changed much. Still has this play 
as 0.014 better than, than this flow. Okay, so what about when we're trailing two nothing? It's still, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, got all the six. Still has the splitting, it still has this play. 0.01 better in this play. So at three nothing, what happens? It's it's getting closer now. Now it's only 0.05. This could be a stylistic thing. This could be, you know what, if you're playing someone that you think that you're better at better than and you you know you want to get into contact and you're trailing three nothing in a seven point match, four away, seven away. It's wrong by 0.005 against XG playing XG, but it may not be wrong against you playing someone else. But technically, it's wrong. It could be right if you have a skill advantage, because this 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 play is going to lead to more complex. This this play will lead to more complex games, and the person with the greater skill may be able. So this is kind. Of, I would say this is an option. A, re a viable option for someone who thinks they're better than their opponent, but otherwise wrong. OK, now, once we get down by four, now it becomes oh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong about this. I thought this I thought this was I made a mistake on this on my axiom somewhere. Sorry. Uh, so I'm glad I found this. Is it is it five? Yeah, it's down by it's five. So. My axiom needs to change. It's you have to be down by five or more at zero. Uh, I was wrong about that. If let's go back to four. Yeah, four it it four nothing trailing four nothing. It's still wrong by point on one four. So I I missed that was a typo. You have to be down by five. Okay, at five nothing, then it's right to split. So you can see. The four one, it's it's almost always right to just split and come down. It's really really right really right to slot. The only score when your opponent has zero is when you, when you're I mean when you have zero is when your opponent has five. Now it's also right when your opponent has when your opponent has uh, when you have one point and your opponent's two when you're two away and you're six away. OK, so the axiom actually is pretty easy to remember that. Unless your opponent, when you have zero or one, make the standard play unless your opponent has five. So I'll, I'll rewrite that. And uh, so here's when your opponent. When you have zero or one, make the standard play unless your opponent has five. OK, what about post Crawford? Say your opponent has six and it's post Crawford. Okay. N now you still at at a score of one, you still make the standard play. At a score of two, you you slot. Or three standard play. Score of four slot. So looks like yeah when your opponent is. When your opponent, when your post Crawford and your opponent has six, at odd scores you split and even scores you slot. And I think we did one, one other one other. Let me check the axiom again. And I'm gonna see if I can. Okay, so one other thing is so when your opponent is five or what when your opponent is two away to always when your opponent is two away, it's said to always always split. I mean slot. So five nothing you slot, five one you slot, five two you slot, five three you slot, five four you slot. Five five you slide, so that's that's an easy to remember. When your opponent is two away and you and you have an opening four one, 
you always slide. That's very easy to remember. Your opponent has two away, I always slide. End of story. Uh, even if it's two away, two away. And obviously, when when you're three away, now it becomes hugely right, 0 0.025, because obviously, here's the final position. This position, you're three away, your, your opponent, I mean, sorry, you're four away, your opponent's two away. You're four away, he's two away. This is where a gammon wins the match for you. That's when you play aggressive. That's when you play all your, these aggressive scores, 5-2, two, 2 down, 2-1, two, which is normal, right anyway, but 4-1 becomes hugely right. Uh, so if we go back to the axioms, share that page again. And remember, I had a typo in there. Okay, so this was wrong. Let, let me just see if I can correct this right now. Uh, so play 23, nine and less. Basically, was, your opponent has, can't, it won't let me correct this. Um, anyway, this, this opening line is wrong. When your opponent has five and you have zero or one. Okay, so if play 23 to nine, unless your opponent is two away, and you have zero or one. Okay, but look what we have down here. You always play nine to five when your opponent's two away anyway. So we could just take this, we could just take this one out. Because uh, it's only when your opponent was it was the two away anyway. So play 23 to nine unless you're four away and he's two away. When trailing, always play nine. When trailing at Crawford, always play nine to five. And when your opponent's two away. So it's actually even simpler. You play 23 to nine unless you're four away, two away, unless you're you're unless you're trailing at Crawford, or unless your opponent is two away. Okay, and that's that one. Go to the next one, the four three opening. This is this is one of the favorite openings. I've seen so many different variations of this over the years of what people preferred. There was originally it was the uh, it was 20 and 10, and then it became 21 and 9 is slightly better. And, and you know, now it's generally accepted that uh, two down is the best play. OK, so in this, you play two men down, the opening 4-3. You play two men down unless your, your opponent is seven away, you lead by three or more. So if you have three, four, or five, then you play 21 and 9. 21 and 9 is, is the second best play. Uh, when your opponent is 6 or what? Now, there, there are some other defensive scores. Uh, I think it might be after your opponent's opening move, but we're talking about your opening move. Okay. So when your opponent is 6 away, you lead by 2 or more. So when your opponent uh, has 1 and you have 3, 4, or 5, Yeah, so this these are the same. Seven away, you, you lead. Seven away, you have three, four, or five. He's six away, you have three, four, or five. So that's actually one thing. When he's seven away or six away, and you have three, four, or five, then then you split instead of two down. When your opponent is five away, and you lead by one or more, then then you uh, then you split. At Crawford, your way always split at Crawford their way, always play 13 and nine. So let's go back to XG and check these out. And please, if anybody has any questions, ask while we're doing this, if they want to see any specific score. Okay, so now we're talking about four, three. Okay, so. 4-3 at the 0-0 zero, zero score, start with.
or three is a zero zero score. It's a very small. It's Joe, a, you need to see XG. You don't see it? No. I click, I click share it. Let me try again. Okay, I think you see it now because it's vibrating. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you can see here's the opening four three. This is basically zero zero is pretty much the same as money. If you look at unlimited games, it's probably almost identical. Yeah, it's very, very similar. Uh, very slight difference. Okay, so this this was the standard opening play, you know, 30 years ago. Uh, people would split with 4-3, maybe 35 years ago, I don't know. For the for, for, for top back game players made this play for 10 or 15 years. This play is wrong by 0.01. Nobody, you know, it's very hard to analyze these plays. For the use of XG and computers and rollouts, we've been able to, you know, determine what the best plays are. But, you know, it's very, it was very hard for humans. We would, you know, go through the math and this and that, but it's like there's so many variations. It was very hard to do. It's very easy for, you know, a neural net program to roll these out and figure out the opening moves. They, they've all been solved now. But this was, this was the play that was made for years and years, and it's the wrong play. Then this became the play that was made for the next, you know, 30, 30 years or something until, you know, maybe five, six, seven years ago, people discovered that bringing two down was slightly superior. Now, this 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 is a very interesting one because this does change at various match scores. And basically, you should always do this anytime you're tied or trailing, kind of like the 2-1. Anytime you're tied or trailing, you should do this. And mo a lot of the time when you're leading, you should do this. But what our goal is to find out at what scores that we're leading do we not do this. Okay, so let's start off. This, uh, with our opponent having zero, being seven away at all scores. Okay, so when our, when we're leading one nothing, it becomes pretty much a wash over which play to make. You can do this, or you can do this. Either play is pretty much a wash. Point zero 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 one. So you could do like whatever you wish. The same thing at, and sometimes I group these axioms just because if there's no, really no difference in the plays, I don't want to try to remember this plays better by 0 0.001, you know, at this score, this plays better by 0 0.01 at that score. If they're like a wash, I just look for there to be a difference. So for me, it's like two down until it gets to, Three nothing. Now it becomes point zero zero three. That's starting to starting to be significant. And at four nothing, it's up to point zero zero five. And at five nothing, it's point zero zero four. So it's you can see two down is still a really strong play. But it, if if your if your opponent has zero and you have three four or five, it's become right for you to split not not bring two down okay what if your opponent has one well obviously if we're trailing two down right by 0 0.05 obviously if we're tied two down right by 0 0.002 becomes right by less what if we're ahead to one S still right 0 0.003 i think this is the point that it becomes right to split 0.02 because the nice thing to remember when your opponent has zero or one point we have what well, we have to remember that those are grouped together we split when we have three four when they have zero or one we split if we have three four or five so that's pretty nice those two go together when they have zero or one we bring two down unless we have three four or five then we then we split Again, when, they're, when our opponents have zero or one point, when they're six or seven away, we split 
unless we have three, four, or five points, unless we're four, three, or two away. So that's a good one. So what about when our opponent has two points? Obviously, we're going to bring two down at zero because we're trailing. We're going to bring two down at one because we're trailing. We're going to bring two down at two because it's a tied score. Okay, now what happens when we have a one point lead? Have a one point lead, it's still right. And we have a two point lead. That's where it becomes wrong. Okay, so when our opponent is five away, we we have to be we have to be four or five to split. Okay, so when our opponent is we remember when our opponent was zero or one away, we needed three, four, or five. When our when our opponent is five away, we need four or five. Because having three would only be a one point lead, which is still right to come down. Okay. And what about when our opponent is three? Obviously, the I'm not, I'm going to go through all these scores. Obviously, anytime you're behind or tied, it's right to bring two down. Okay. It's right by a lot, especially at this score. Again, 0.011 is one of the largest differences because you you want to go for a gammon. You want to get win you know, win a gammon for the match. Okay. So what about when we're leading four three? Then it's then it's right split. So that's that's a good one to remember because these are also grouped. It one and zero and one are grouped, and two and three are grouped. Two and two and three when our opponent is two or three, or they're four or five away. We split when we have four or five. That's an easy thing to remember. When our opponent has two or three points, we split when we have four or five. Otherwise, we bring two down. So that's that. Those. It's nice that one, zero and one to go together, and two and three to go together. So we only have to remember two axioms there. Oh, what about when our opponent has four? Okay. When our I'm sorry. Opponent has four. Obviously, we're going to do it. We're going to always uh, bring two down anytime we're behind and we still bring two down when it's tied. But what about when we're ahead five, four? Then we split. So you know what? What's really nice about that is it kind of goes with two and three, except for the fact the only difference is uh, we don't do it. We, we know we don't do it when we're tied. So you could say, look, what happens when our opponent has two, three, or four points in a seven-point match? Well, we bring two down unless we are leading and we have four or five points. So at four two, at four two, uh, and at four at four two, we would be leading. If at five two, we would be leading. Uh, so that's nice. That the, I'm sorry, the three. Sorry, at four, at we're leading and we have four or five points. At four three, we would be leading. Uh, at five three, we'd be leading. At four four, we would not be leading. So therefore, we'd still bring two down. But at five uh, five four, we would be leading. So then we would split. So that's a nice axiom. In, anybody want to look at any of these? So let's go over them. Let me, Karen, can you remember what they are? What are they? Can anybody asking? hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now, but I was on mute. Okay. Can can you can you remember what the axioms are for the three four opening at the match scores? Not off the top of my head, no. Okay, so they're they're they're. Let's go over them one more time. I'm going to share them on the screen again. I hope I'm not boring you guys to death. You know, I got the oh, point so that if I'm three, four, or five, then I need to split. Um, otherwise, I just do the. I mean, I need to. Um, 
yeah, I have to be cautious at three, four, or five. So, it's important to remember these axioms because they're so easy to remember and you'll never make a mistake. And they come up all the time. They come up every match you play, they're going to come up, you know, uh, or, you know, most, not every, not every, not all the time, but the, most of the time you'll have every tournament you're going to have these several times, put it that way. So on the 4 3 opening, you always come down with two. The only time you don't come down with two is if your opponent's seven away, you lead by three or more. When your opponent is six away, you lead by two or more. Now, we're not talking about Crawford scores, and we're not talking about, we're talking about, you know, pre-Crawford pre scores. So when you're seven, when your opponent's seven away, you have three, four, or five. Uh, then you split instead of, instead of two down. When your opponent's six away, and you have three, four, or five. So those go together. Those when your opponent's seven away or six away, and you have three, four, or five, then you then you split instead of slide. When your opponent is five away and you lead by one or more, then you, then you uh, then you split instead of slide. And at Crawford your way, always split. And at Crawford their way, always play thirteen to nine. That's that's pretty easy to remember that. Uh, Joe, yeah. Even even if we don't remember um, slotting with both, it's the the error is pretty minuscule, right? So even if we don't what remember, mean, what, what do you mean slotting with both? You mean, uh, you mean if, uh, the nine ten coming down to yes. So even if we forget um, the variations. Isn't it like the two one just coming down and splitting? Yeah, um, you, mean, you mean come down and slotting? Yeah, well, for for the four three, so coming down and slotting. Oh, no, for the four three, you're coming you said, down. You said and like the two one, the two. You you said like the two one, the two one. Right. The correct play is to come down and slide. And, right. So even and you can you can you can you you, you rarely be wrong if you did any if you never did another play. Right. But the four three is the different animal. The four three you can be wrong with other plays, but it's not wrong by much. We'll go back and look at that. Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Even if we don't remember. But these uh, things are so easy to remember, uh, Antoinette. You can commit them to memory, and 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 and, and you could take all these and commit them to memory in an hour, and you'd never make another mistake in your backgammon career. Okay. Uh, hold on one sec. I have a question. Sure, go ahead. I'm sorry, I, I might be a little lost here. When you're talking about the 4-3 and you're using the word slot, I'm confused because to me, slot is putting a checker in your home board. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I was using the word slot. Antoinette was. If I did, I did. I used it inappropriately. Okay. There, there's two plays with 4-3. Bring two men down and play 21, splitting, and nine. Those are the only two plays that Right. You're, you, that you should ever consider with your opening move. There should never be another pl play under consideration with your opening move. Okay. In replies, you can have a different play, you know, different match scores. But for your own opening move, the only two plays you should ever consider are bringing two men down, which is this. Or. So, Joe, let me try again. You know, I know it's. If you learn all these rules, then you can play all of this perfectly, if you can recall it correctly. But, you know, my normal play with 3-4 is to come down, come down. And so okay. what I get away, take away from this is if I need to be thinking about protecting my lead, um, yeah. then splitting the back is better. 24, 21, 39, better than bringing two down. So as opposed to just being on rote of bringing two down. Well, yeah. Think let's, more let's, about let's, splitting yeah. when I'm ahead. So. Right. So let's look at what Antoinette was trying to point out, and she's right to some degree, is you're usually not too wrong making the best play the normal best play at almost any match score. 
And she was trying to say, you know, I'd almost rather just do that all the time than have to remember anything. But there's not that much to remember there. Like when you have like three axioms to remember, there's only a few roles that make it the dif make any difference at match scores. And there's only a few axioms for those few roles. And, and literally, Karen, you could memorize all these axioms in one hour and you would never make a mistake. Uh, and, uh, you know, for all the time you spend playing backgammon, for all the time this comes up, that seems like some of the most valuable time you could spend. Uh, but anyway, let's go back to. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, some of the people that I play, they come, they do uh, 24 to 20 and then come down to the 10. Mm -hmm. And I personally prefer the 21 and the 9. What is the difference? It's a, it's about, well, you can see it's about 0.01, which is a significant difference in an opening move. Uh, if we look at this, 1310, 139 is 0.002 better than 24, 21, 13, 9. This is, a, this is a zero, zero score. And it's a whole, it's 0.01. It's five times more, more bright than 24, 20, 13, 10. As I mentioned earlier, 24, 20, 13, 10 used to be the preferred opening 40 years ago. Some of those people that you play, I don't know, maybe they're still playing from 40 years ago. Uh, but I'd say like 30 years ago, it was realized that 21 and 9 was better. Uh, even prior to the bots, that kind of became just from mathematical analysis of people trying to figure out the responses, that became pretty clear that that was slightly better than 2420. And then only in the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years or something, people realized that two down was actually the best play. Uh, but it's very close. They, at zero, these are like, these are almost a matter of preference. But Karen, I can show you some of the scores. Like, say you're, uh, you're five and your opponent's three. And now let's look at it. Uh, yeah, splitting the back. Your, your two down is now 0.023 wrong. I mean, it's not even the top three plays anymore. It's the fourth best play. You have right. this. This is when your your opponents, you know, your he's your opponents four away, you're two away. They're gam and go, and now your play is is a huge error. 0 0.023. You can't afford to make 0 0.023 errors on the opening move. Right. Uh, and let's try another one. Let's say say. Uh, you're a six and your opponent's five. Okay, so now, so six, five, Crawford, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're at six and your opponent's five, it's Crawford game. It's a 0 0.012 error to, right. to make, to, to bring two down at that score. So, there a lot of these scores. These are these are some of the most extreme scores. A lot of the scores do, do, doesn't make any difference. If you were going to just remember a general rule, bring two down unless I've got a significant lead, then split. Or I, I'm fear or a gammon's going to hurt me. Like if a gammon's going to hurt me a lot, then maybe I should split. But if a gammon's not going to hurt me a lot, bring two down. Or if I need to be aggressive, if I'm tied or trailing, bring two down. So if you want to make it a simple axiom. Uh, bring two down unless bring two down if it's if if it's if I'm trailing or it's tied, and bring two down if the score is very close, even if I'm bleeding by a little. Uh, but you know to learn the exact if I'm worried axioms. Worried about a gammon? If I'm worried about a gammon, don't do that. Yeah. Right. If you're worried about, but it's not always just worried about a gammon, but it's pretty much it. I mean, yeah. I'm enough ahead that I'm protecting. Right. Ahead. Right. If it 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 zero if you if it zero if you're three four when your opponent's at zero if you're three four or five ahead. Uh, when your opponent's at one if you're three four or five ahead. When your opponent's at two is if you're four or five ahead. When your opponent's at three is if you're you're. I think four. Let's say your opponent's at three. I believe it's.
when you're positive threes, if, if you're one or two, two let's see. Yeah, when your opponents, when your when your opponents, yeah, that's a good one. When your opponents at when your opponents at two or three, if you have four or five, then you should split. So that's, those two go together again. So remember, they, this is pretty easy. If your opponent is at zero or one, you split if you have three, four. It's a seven point match. If your opponent's at zero or one, you split if you have three, four, or five. Zero or one for them, three, four, or five for me. Split. When my opponent is at uh, two or three, I split if I have four or five. My opponent, so those th 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 you've got four scores there already. Your opponent's at zero or one. I come down with two unless I have three, four, or five. My opponent's at two or three. I come down with two unless I have four or five. So look at that. There's 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 two axioms right there that's co covered your opponent's score of zero, one, two, and three. And just two axioms. And that's going to be a, a big chunk of the scores that they'll ever have. Uh, and actually, you can even change the last one to if my opponent has the first one was zero or one. You can change the last one if my opponent has two, three or four. And I'm leading and I have four or five. Split. So, so there's two axioms that covers the scores of zero, one, two, three, three, and four. So that's that's a big chunk of your opponent's scores they'll ever have. Okay, so let's go over those again. If if I, if my opponent has zero or one, I come down with two unless I have three, four, or five, unless I have three, four, or five points. If my opponent has two or three, I come down with two unless I have four or five. If my opponent, I'm sorry, that, that was two, three, or four. My opponent has two, three, or four. I come down with two unless I have four or five, unless I'm at four or five or the score is tied, which the only time the score would be tied in that situation is four to four. So I, I still come down with two at four to four, but I split at five to four. So that's, that's really, really, really easy. I mean, that's, and at five, five, the only other score is when my opponent has five. And at five five, uh, you split. But this at a five five score, you split. So let's go to the next one. I hope this is helping you guys. Uh, it's really really helped me a lot to do this because uh, I like axioms. I don't like to try to remember 75 different things. If I can remember like three things that covers that covers an, covers a play and it covers you know all my opponent's scores, that's like such a great tool for me. Uh, yes, definitely. I'm going to make some adjustments to my game personally because of this. So Joe, it's been valuable. Okay, the five two opening. Okay, so the five two opening, it's you know, it's a much, it's a, something of a better play to to play your know, opening play twenty four twenty two and thirteen to eight. Okay, so you ha it, again, this is like another one where you have to like be kind of kind of desperate to make any other play. So obviously, any time that you're uh, any time that you're ahead or tied, you're going to just make the standard play twenty two and eight. OK, so one are the exceptions, if your opponent, if you have zero points and your opponent has two or more. So in a seven point match, if you have zero and they have two, three, four, five, six. You know, then you would play two down. Because uh, you're you know, you you now you're needing to, to try to catch up more quickly. You need a gammon. If you have one, two or three points and your opponent has four or more. Then you bring two down. If you have four points and your opponent has five, then you bring two down. And when your opponent is as at Crawford, always play two down. So these these are pretty. This is again very few things to remember. If you have zero, always play always 
uh, to play 22 and eight unless you're trailing by, you have zero points and you're trailing by two or more. You have one point, two points or three points and your opponent has four or five. So that's two axioms that covers most of my scores. I'm covering zero, one, two, and three. That's four of my scores. When I have four points and my opponent has five, okay? So if I'm down by two or more, uh, it's zero. If I'm down, if I have one, two, or three and my opponent has four or five, and if I have four points and my opponent has five, and then I always remember when, when my opponent is at Crawford, play two down anytime you have an odd score and you need a gamut. Two down when you need a gamut. So let's go look at that. Okay, so now we're talking about a 5-2. Okay, so if we go to the 0-0 zero, zero score, Okay, so we can see this is a this is a significantly better play to split to make this play is significantly better than making this play. It's 0 .001, uh, yeah, 0 .011, yeah, 0 .011. It's 0 .011 better to make this play. Okay, so now because any time a play is better for money or at an even match score, uh, a long, at a long match score, it has there has to be significant reason for us to make another play. So the first case is let's say when we have zero and our opponent has one, we're, we're down we're down by one. It's still right to make the normal play by point zero zero six. What if we're trailing by two? Now we're down. We're becoming a little bit more desperate trailing by two. What becomes the right play there? Okay, this is basically a wash. Okay. It becomes a wash whether you make this play or this play. I made this part of the axiom when you're when you're trailing by two or more. I could have said three or more at zero because this is actually a wash. Okay. When you're trailing by three, uh, it's still pretty much of a wash. When you're trailing by four, then it becomes clearly right to bring two down. So this axiom could either be either way. You could say, when I'm at zero, I have my opponent has maybe it's even better easier to remember. When I'm at zero, my opponent has to be at four or more. If my opponent is at four or more, then I bring two down. So I have to be trailing by four when I'm at zero. Okay. And at five, it becomes more right and at six it becomes it's also very right so let's change that axiom this axiom is it, it both of them are true because they were pushes the other way but you could just say always make the standard play and let when i'm at zero unless my opponent has four or more okay all right what about when i'm at one Make the standard play when my opponent's at two. Make the standard play when my opponent's at three. Okay, so this is this is now fitting with one. So that's good. So now I can group these together. That's great. When I'm at zero or one, make the standard play with a five two, unless my opponent has four or more. So when I'm zero or one, make the standard play with an opening five two unless my opponent has four or more. Okay, what about when I'm at two? Well, you know what's beautiful about this? It also works for two. So this axiom becomes easier and easier. When I have zero, one, or two, make the standard play unless my opponent has four or more. 
So I'm at zero, one, or two. I make the standard play unless my opponent is four or more. What about when I'm at three? Wow, this also fits. So now what do we have? When I'm at zero, one, two, or three, make the standard play unless my opponent is four or more. This is becoming the best axiom of all. If I have zero, one, two, or three, I make the standard play unless my opponent has four or more. What about when I'm at four? That would also, also fit uh, the last one, as long as we add the rule and I'm trailing. So I'm, when I'm at zero, one, two, three, or four, make the standard play unless my opponent has four or more and I'm trailing. So at four, four, I would, I would make the standard play, but at four, five, I would not. And what about at five, five? Make the standard play. And it's six, five post Crawford, make the standard play. So that's great. One, one, one rule covers all five twos in all seven point match scores. Make the standard play unless I have zero, one, two, three, or four, and my opponent has four or more and I'm trailing. Which the only case I would be tied is the four, four score. The four, four score, I wouldn't do it. So one axiom covers everything you need to know for five, two. Uh, actually, we did have to go to the Crawford. There was an interesting thing in the Crawford scores. That's the only other thing, but that's also an interesting to remember, easy to remember. At Crawford's, it, when my opponent is Crawford and I'm zero, I make the standard play. When I'm one, I think I bring two down. Yeah. When he's two, I make the standard play. When he's three, I bring two down. When he's four, I make the standard play. When it's five, I bring two down. So the logic of that obviously is bringing two down, you can see when it's 14.1% gamuts, if you look here on XG, and splitting when it's 13.3% gamuts. When you're at an odd score, your opponent's at Crawford and you an odd score, if you can win a gammon, you'll save an entire game that you have to win. When you're at even, a gammon doesn't help you save a game. So this is an easy one to remember. When your opponent is six, when your opponent's at Crawford and you're an odd number away, bring two down. When you're an even number away, split. That's that's about all I have for the, the opening variations. The one other thing I wanted to, to mention was the very unique score of uh, four away, two away, and how even to this day, 90% of backgammon players, maybe even 95%, are not aggressive enough at that score. And I wanted to show you just a few examples of what you should do at that score. So we're going to say we're four away, and our opponent is, our score is three, and our opponent's, we're four away, and our opponent's two away. Okay, we open with a 3-1. Our opponent responds with a 5-1. What let me what's your which let me ask each person what they think the proper cube action with white on shake here is. Double. Double. It's four away, two away, double aggressively. As soon as you make an inner void point, you double. Well, that's not necessarily true, but certainly when you make a five or a four point, John. Well, like a, mostly, an advanced, yeah. Even, you can even make the three point, but I can't tell you how many people do not double this, and this is a solid double. I'll show you this right here. Mm -hmm. This is a double point eight three. It's it's a blunder to not double this. Okay, and it, now if they roll like six five.
then it's not a double. So it's not as soon as you make an interboard point. Joe, um, pull it up on uh, XG, please. Am I not Do showing you XG? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me switch. To that, that is XG, isn't it? XG is up. XG is up. Yeah. Oh, OK. OK, so it's it's not it's not as soon as you make an interboard point, but you know, the, in other well, words, sure, the might, race has something to do with it. And, well, yeah, yeah, it's it's not that, but let, not just the race. They they if they responded with if a they three one their own or something. Home, right? Yeah. So, but basically, it's kind of like if they if you make pretty much if you make uh, see even even if you roll three one and they roll three one, it's only wrong by point oh five one. It's not almost not wrong by that much to double. It's not even wrong. If you could double on the opening shake, it's not wrong by that much. Uh, if we could actually, we can probably set I can set that up and show you. It's not a huge error to double on the opening shake if you could do that. Uh, if it was White's roll and they could and it was the opening position and they could double. Well, I guess it would be wrong by one. I guess that's that is wrong. Oh, what is yes. the score? What's the score? Four four away, two away. It would be wrong by a lot. I I, I thought it might not be wrong that much. Oh, we we have a man born off. That's what's going on. Let's try this. Yeah, I didn't think it was wrong, but it's it's point oh nine two. If you could double in the opening position, you're only making you're making a blunder, but it's only point oh nine two, as compared to like a money game. If you doubled in the opening position, it would be a 0.483 error. But at this score, it's only a 0.092 error. So if you could double before you even roll, if it was your roll, but you could double before you rolled, it would only be a 0.092 error. So basically, April was kind of right. Almost any time you make, the real thing is, any time you make an interboard point and they split, you you practically have a double. So like if you roll a five three and now let's say they roll a five one and they split. Okay, so now the double action is correct to double. So may I make a statement here? So sure. pretty much when at this score if you have doubled the game, then it kind of dictates how you play the rest of the game. The rules, of course, being important, but uh, you know, you might have choices and you might play just be much more aggressive and going for the gammon because once the game is doubled, it's it's a win for you if you win the game. Oh yeah, the reason you're doubling here is is the reason you're doubling these positions is because they're potential blitzes and you're going for a gamut. Right, that's exactly. Why, that's, right. Why, that's why you doubled. You've got a stronger board. You're ahead right. two pips. You're right. on roll. You have a potential attack. Uh, if this had been like a, this this is a double by 0.032, but if it had been like a 3-1, you can see this is going to be a double by 0.092. And if it had been a 4-2, I mean, those those are strong opening positions. Yeah. What about a, making the two point and they split? Not that they should, but no. At this score, at this score, you should definitely make the deuce point. It's a big blunder to not make the deuce point. No, actually. no. I, I mean, I mean, if they if we make the deuce point, which is correct, and then they split. Is it a double if we make that deep point? Okay, so let's let's just look at that. So let's see. The thing is, they're not going to split. Uh, when you've made the deuce point, they're not going to split with a lot of these numbers. But let's go here. Let's see. Uh, Even two down. Just curious how okay. much of a double it is. If All right, we so we'll just we'll point. just we'll just put a roll in there. Let's see. Okay, so here's a here's a splitting play. Uh, this is this is very close between bringing two up. 
most in most situations, bringing two up wouldn't be right, right here. But the reason that bringing two up is close here, if this play is close to being correct play, it's not. The, the correct play is this. But this play is close. Just this this gives you an emphasis of because if they point on you, you have a very good chance of anchoring. And if you anchor on one of these higher points, your your chances of being gammoned are are so small. For example, at this score, if they'd opened with a six one. And now you roll four three. No, you're not going to bring two up. No, you bring you do you do bring two up. Two up? Both yeah. up. Really? Two up. Any other play is a huge oh. blunder. Wow. When they open with a six one, you bring two up. And the reason you do that is mm -hmm. what I just pointed out. They may point on you, but you've got a great chance of anchoring on the other guy on the other point. Like, you know, if they if they make their five point, you've got a great chance of anchoring on the four point. If they make the four point, you've got a great chance of anchoring on the five point. So this okay. this this is something you should you should this should definitely be in your repertoire. An opening six one mm -hmm. and you're you're uh two away and your opponent's four away, you bring you you, oh, you with a four three, you bring two up. Uh Probably has to do with the fact that he's really pretty stripped except for his six point. Hold on one sec. Hi, I'm in, I'm giving a conference, uh, a, a lecture online. I'll be finishing in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so anyway, back to let's say like a six, uh, we, we were going back to the six, four, four, three. Hmm and seeing how close this was to a double. So this is double action by white. Let's see, change back to player. Okay, this is this this is a double. So basically almost any of those make a point and they split plays. You know, that's, these are basically all doubles. So this this is I would I really I literally think ninety five percent of players maybe ninety eight percent of players are way too passive at this score. You just have to be. It's just when you have any chance of a gammon, it's if you have a if you say wow if I roll my best am I in good shape for a gammon or have a chance you know it doesn't have to be in good shape I have to have just a chance a sniff at a gammon. If I'm winning otherwise and I have a sniff at a gammon it's a double. Uh, and you know, like we we gave the example of three one six five not being that wrong to double. You know, that's a pretty you wouldn't consider doubling that for money. Like, look at the difference. The three one six five. Okay, three one six five. Let me just Okay, here's a three one six five at this score. Was wrong by point oh three or something? No, point oh eight nine. It's wrong by point oh eight nine to double at this score. But, and that's because the gammons, you know, aren't looking so good because he's escaped. Oh, we have. A, I thought it wasn't wrong by that much. Point oh six nine. It's wrong by point oh. Oh, I'm sorry. This this is a double. I must I must have put it in wrong. Before. Uh -huh. Okay, even this is a double. So I, when you were you were right before, I, I think I had I had to check her born off accident. So you were right before, even, almost making your three point is almost a double. Uh, if this had been the oh, I've, I've got too many checkers here. I'm sorry. Well, maybe that's it's not as strong. Hey Joe, um, I'm gonna have to leave here pretty soon. Um, there have been requests. For you to share your axiom, are you willing to share your document with the group? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll certainly. I'll, I, I need to. There was a typo in one of them. I need to retype mm -hmm. it, but I'll certainly send it to you. If you okay. send it to me an email, I can post a link um, for the the our audience to download it. When sure, we sure. Post the video. Okay. okay, that would be really great. Thank here's, you. Here's here's the example that you mentioned. You make a three one, and they roll with six five. I was wrong. This this is a borderline double. So basically, this tells you almost. If you make if you make your three point with an opening three one and they do anything besides make 
a, you know, they, if they don't make a point in their own board, you have a double. What if what if they rolled five three? Black still has a checker on. OK, thank you. I'm bad at doing that. You still have a superior position. Yeah, this is still a double superior position. Uh, race is basically even. You have some threats. You know, your threats are your board stronger, your threats stronger, your own role. Uh, this 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 is a perfect example. This is a perfect example. You should not miss this double. What if it had been a 4-2 and a 5-3? That's probably going to get very borderline-ish. This is when your opponent is two away. And you're four away. This, yeah, this this is yeah. when your opponent is two away and four away. This is the, yes. the, the most special score in backgammon. Okay. Uh, and this is still a double. You rolled four two. Uh, you you're you're down two pips, which means you're basically ahead two pips because being on roll is worth four pips. So you're ahead two pips. You have a stronger board. This is a double. So the the the, the take from this is remember to be very 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 aggressive uh, in doubling when you're four away and your opponent's two away and you have a, anything of a superior position. You have. You don't, he hasn't split here, but you do have a, a threat because he's still locked in on the 24 point. What if you both point. have, what if you both opened with a 5-3? It was even. Miracle. My guess is, my guess is that's no double. That's probably no double by 0. 0.02 or 3 or something. No double by 0. 0.017. Very nice, very close, good job. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, but you can see this position is not that threatening. He does he doesn't have his four or five point. You've got an e equal positions. It's not that threatening. The other thing to remember from the from the other side is when can you when do you have to pass? Uh, and you have to pass pretty early. This is the other mistake that people make. So let's say that we're leading five three. And black is open with a three one. And let's say we roll five six, one. Six two, I was thinking. Okay. Well, anything you want to think. Uh six two. So the proper play for black was six two. Make sure that we put the proper plays in. Um, check a play. Okay, is so it, is it white on roll right now? Yeah, so nor no, this is black rolling a six two, and then white's going to be on roll. So the normal play with the six two is to play twenty four eighteen and thirteen eleven in this position. Uh, I'm sorry, we have we haven't had we haven't had white roll. I'm sorry, we had. To, I was thinking white. of white rolling a six yeah. two after right, black right. had rolled the three one. Right. Okay, right. Okay, sorry. Right. White rolls a six two. Okay, the normal play is 24, 18, 13, 11. Okay, so now it's black on roll, double action. Okay, so we have an, we have an easy, we, it's a super strong double. We still have a pretty comfortable take here. Uh, usually there are not gonna be too many opening variations that are going to be passes. I'm just, let's see if we can find, I mean, 5-1 is, again, kind of along, along the same lines, right? Yeah, that's along the same lines. 5-4s, uh, about 5-4. Yeah, these, these, are, these are kind of the same opening variations. So let's just say, you're playing your punt. You, you you open with a five one, and 
your opponent didn't double. And let's say now he rolls uh, double ones and does this. And now you roll three two. So let's see, if white rolls a three two. And brings you down. Two yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. But guess what? No matter how you play it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a, a pass. Wash. It's a pass. Well, Two three, three point boards, right nothing. Play, but let's just do it. Okay, now black's on roll. And look at this. Look at this. A 354 arrow to take. Well, you have nothing going for yourself. Or nothing. Yeah, but let's look at this at, at money. No, I don't play money. Okay. For money, it's not even a double. Huh, isn't that funny? Yeah. For money, it's it, you're it's a mistake to double, and it, at this particular match score, it's a 354 arrow to take. And that's massive. So this shows you why you have to double. Why black should have doubled in the previous position, because look what happened. One roll later. He rolled double one, so the other side rolled three, two, and now he, he lost his market by a massive amount. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. X, X would say this is a whopper with cheese. <laughs> it's a triple whopper with cheese. <laughs> the cheese is the 54, the triple is the 300. Anyway, that's that's that concludes my, my lecture, but I, this, these, uh, Learning, I'll, I'll print out the, I'll print up something. I'll, I'll, I'll correct that uh, uh, PowerPoint that I have uh, where I have the typo and I'll send it to you and hopefully everybody can have it for study material. I appreciate you guys having me on. I hope it wasn't too boring. I know I'm pretty technical when it comes to things and that can be hard, to, but when you can sit down and look at these axioms and read them at your own pace, I think you can incorporate them into your game much easier. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Joe. Very informative. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Joe My away, pleasure. Away was just fantastic. So, thank you, Karen. Thank you, Joe, very much. Okay, you're welcome. Bye, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, all.